Hi, Rick Krishna devotees. Please accept my humble obeisance as all the Shishwar Prabhupada. Welcome to devotees from Morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we will be discussing from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 17, Verse 14. And the chapter is entitled The Punishment and Reward of Kali. We are very happy to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami with us. Hare Krishna Paharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you, all the Shishwar Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Maharaj, and it's all yours, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Not that one, the other one. <laughs> Miseries of personal servants. <laughs> <laughs> Every soul is independent <laughs> and have a mind of its own marriage, right? And then it, it, it does better when it does that. When it, <laughs> <laughs> it follows Krishna's protocol for living <laughs> otherwise it needs someone else and when it needs someone else it has more problems <laughs> is that where it was no it wasn't there either <laughs> you didn't see where it was put it in front yeah, okay. <laughs> sorry i'm I'm multitasking right now. It's okay, Marsh. No problem. No problem. All right, I'll be ready. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, 17th chapter, verse number 14. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Jene Nagasya Gam Yudhyam. Darvato Shwa Chamadbayam Sadunam Bhagre Vam Shad. Asadu Damane Krite. Translation Maharaj Pariksha is speaking to the personification of Kali. Whoever causes offenseless living beings to suffer must fear me every, anywhere and everywhere in the world. By curbing dishonest miscreants, one automatically benefits the offenseless. Purport. Dishonest miscreants flourish because of cowardly and impotent heads, executive heads of state. But when the executive heads are strong enough to curb all sorts of dishonest miscreants, in any part of the state, certainly they cannot flourish. And the miscreants are punished in an exemplary manner automatically, but all good fortune follows. As said before, it is the prime duty of the king or the executive head to give protection in all respects to the peaceful, offenseless citizens of the state. The bodies of the Lord are by nature peaceful and offenseless. Therefore, it is the prime duty of the state to arrange to convert everyone to become a devotee of the Lord. Thus, automatically, it will be peaceful, offenseless citizens. Then, the only duty of the king will be to curb dishonest miscreants. That will bring about peace and harmony all over human society.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama. So the main uh, responsibility, duty of the state, which means those who rule the state, is to give, make sure the citizens, uh, given whatever they need, to live nicely, materially, and at the same time, practice spiritual life. This is the duty. The executive heads are, in the Vedic culture, understood to be in the mood of a parent who has a lot of facilities at their control to provide and to punish when needed. But nowadays, we see, and this is a feature of this age of Kali, as we are seeing here, Kali is being introduced now into the society from the Bhagavatam, we're seeing how Kali, Kali makes his move to enter into human society as the beginning of his age becomes, well, the time. And so because of that, people are not happy. And right now in society, people are scrambling all over the world because things are falling apart on all levels. And the idea of control by the government is something that is done simply out of benefit. In other words, not everyone's benefit, but the benefit of a few chosen persons who have power and position and facility in society. And so we see this like if someone will go to jail for committing a murder, uh, they will stay in jail for some time, sometimes 20, 30 years. And they come back out and they kill some more people. It happens. Rather than taking care of the punishment of the, uh, because as the Manu Samhita mentions, that life for life, if one is killed, they must be killed in order to purge themselves. And this is beneficial to the wrongdoer because then they don't have to suffer in their next life. If a wrongdoer is not punished by the by the authorities for breaking the law, then that crime becomes a feature of their, their bad karma in the next life, and sometimes even in the present life, particularly in the case of killing. So here we see a righteous king wants to give protection because failing to protect against or punishing the miscreants means that that miscreants will take advantage of that and become more and more profuse, profuse in society. And then society is overwhelmed with crime and they can't do anything about it. Just like when Srila Prabhupada was here, he, uh, wrote an, art, uh, an article, oh no, Prabhupada saw an article in Time Magazine that was in the sense, it said, crime, um, crime and what to do. So the, the uh, leaders in society were noticing that was so much crime and they couldn't find a solution. So Prabhupada 
uh, made some public statements, which came caught the attention of some leaders in Chicago at the time, uh, Lieutenant Mosey and the uh, mayor of the city of Chicago also, Mayor Daly. And both of them had discussions with Shiva Prabhupada. Uh, the one with Lieutenant Mosey is quite long. And Prabhupada goes back and forth. And Prabhupada says that we can prevent crime. We can eliminate crime by giving people Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said, you just give us some facility, a building, and we will have, we will have kirtan and invite everyone to come and take Sri Rashadam. Or we will even go into the workplaces where people are working and distribute foodstuffs and hold kirtan. But we can see from that discussion, you can hear from the discussion that they didn't think it was a solution. And they gave many reasons why they couldn't follow Srila Prabhupada's directions. So we have the solution is make people first-class citizens, free them from that desire. Just like when people go to jail, and they go and they have to undergo some punishment. And then, but the desire seed remains within the heart and mind. Punishment doesn't change a person's life because there is a thing called weakness of heart, that even though a person knows, Prabhupada makes the example, a thief will know it's wrong. Why, how does he know? When does he go to steal? At night, when it's the, the most opportune time to do crimes. Because, you know, he knows it's wrong, therefore I have to go at night. But still, they know it's wrong and they know they'll get punished, but still they go on and do it because that desire seed sits within the heart and it cannot be uprooted by simply by punishment. It has to be uprooted by a higher consciousness of purification of, of, the, of the heart, cheto darpana marchan, and by chanting the holy names and by coming in contact with spiritual activities. Otherwise, there is no reformation for anyone on any level as long as they use material solutions for material problems. And Shila, as Shila um, Prahlad Maharaj would say, material solutions to material problems are more problematic than the problems because they don't really go to the root cause of the problem, which is a person's contaminated consciousness. And that's the way the material world works. They keep trying to make a better world, at least some of the people who are well-intended, but they don't understand the solution. And they simply try to adjust and adjust, adjust, and adjustment becomes a constant thing. And especially in the age of Kali, where there is so much crime. And even the statistics show that in the America, more than 1% of the population is in jails. The population is 300 million, I think, in America, something like that, or close to it. And 1% of that is what? Is like. 30,000, 300,000. I'm not sure what is 1%. Yeah. It's 3 million. How many? 3 million. 3 million. Yeah, 3 million, Three million people are in prison. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and people live in fear with so much crime everywhere around, just like in many of the 
Western industrial countries that are considered to be advanced. People cannot walk the streets at night because they don't know, especially women, they'll know they'll be attacked at any time. People will be robbed and uh, abused. But because the leaders are soft on feminine crimes, why are they soft on crimes? Because they're of the same nature, <laughs> pretty much. They're also uh, criminals in the sense that they simply use their position for their own aggrandizement or their own uh, fulfillment of their own material desires. Not everyone, but many of the people who are in leadership positions within the government are actually criminals themselves. And many of them get caught and sometimes are punished. Most of them don't get caught because when you have money, you can buy your way out of anything. <laughs> All you have to have is money, and if you do something wrong, you pay the right people, and you're uh, you're free. <laughs> Apparently, you're not free from the reactions of your activities. You're free from at least the punishment that will come by way of civil law. And so, yeah, this is uh, so we live in a very uh, we say dangerous society nowadays. And depending on what country you live in, some countries are not like that. People are more uh, less crime, but in, especially in the United States of America, in the in the UK, United Kingdom, especially in London, so much crime, and people have guns. Criminals are also shooting people randomly for no reason. So yeah, it's it's a quite a way. And the, with all of their armed forces and with all of their military and police forces, they can't stop it because they don't know how to stop it. And, and in some sense, they don't even want to stop it because. Crime is also a big business. <laughs> so yeah, but here we understand what is a real leader. He sees the interests of the people, especially. And Prabhupada says here that uh, by punishing the dishonest miscreants, one automatically benefits the offenseless. Very powerful statement. So uh, we're actually giving benefit to those who are innocent or offenseless by punishing the miscreants. But, and the miscreants can't punish the other miscreants because they're miscreants themselves. I remember when I was in Chicago, when I first came to Chicago in the end of the 1990s, crime was everywhere around us. We would hear gunshots, gang fights would be around the temple during the evening time. And uh, it was really, you, you had the, if you parked your car outside the temple, you didn't know if it was going to get stolen. I remember I left my car outside the temple and uh, I think I left the door unlocked. This was, uh, was in the midday. Uh, and then when I came out, some guy was inside my car looking for some, some change. So he did, you know, to keep change in your ashtray. <laughs> so he was looking for some money in my car. So I came up to him and I said, what are you doing? And he, he got disturbed because I was bothering him. <laughs> I told him, this is my car, get out of here. <laughs> he looked at me like, you know, I need some change. <laughs> so yeah, in broad daylight, people even commit crimes and so don't even care. Now this is this is our a lawless, lawless society. That's just one of the problems. And because people are not 
at least pious, what to speak about becoming Krishna conscious. They're not even pious nowadays. So what to do? And the only thing we can do here is, as it says here, that the devotees of the Lord are naturally very peaceful. And therefore, it is the prime duty of this state to arrange to convert everyone to become a devotee of the Lord. Whether it's following this tradition or that tradition is secondary. The most important part is to make people God conscious. They're God conscious, then they will not harm others, at least that is the principle of being God conscious. They do good leaders rather than causing others on them. So this is a, uh, and you see, and this will continue, as Srila Prabhupada said that he, well, he would predicted the downfall of Western society in 50 years from the time that he stated that. And he said the cities will become like jungles where uh, there will be so much crime that people will be leaving the cities just to survive. As crime proliferates, then more and more crime will continue because criminals think, oh, I, yeah, it's easy. Just get some money, buy your way out of out of any kind of punishment, any way you crime, why go to work? <laughs> it's like in the UK, uh, the, there's a lot of robberies in the UK, so many, even many of our devotees, their houses have been broken into in the UK, many devotees, not just a few. Because the criminals, they look for houses that are Indian, because they know the Indians, they keep jewelry and, uh, uh, you know, you know the women keep jewelry, they get jewelry from their parents or on, when they're born or around their wedding. They, there's a lot of jewelry in Indian communities. And so the criminals, they, they look and see which house has the signs of an Indian house on it, and then they, they focus on those houses. So yeah, so criminals are very, uh, criminality is actually an art. There's criminals that really study the whole science of criminality. They know how to, how to use their intelligence in order to pull off their crimes. Very crafty, probably called, probably calls them intelligent, but in the wrong way. Oh yeah. There's just one of our devotees recently got cheated by a criminal. He started a company and he was giving out false uh, houses to people, promising them that he would rent them these houses if they needed to rent them. And so they would pay, they would sign a contract, give money in advance, and then when it come to uh, providing, he wouldn't provide. And then he would turn off his phone and you couldn't reach him. And then when you tried to, if you if you contact with him, then his company that he started was no longer, he would dissolve the company. So he would uh, create a company, cheat people based on the company, and then when it comes to the, the supply, he would dissolve the company and his lawyers would defend him that there is no company anymore. So you can't sue anyone. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Criminals are just everywhere nowadays. So many, so much crime. So that is due to a deficient uh, law-keeping uh, law society. Sometimes when you call the police, they don't even come. If you're in trouble, they won't even come. Or if they do come, they wait a long time until it, until it it's all over, and then they ride on the scene when everything's all over. But actually, you know, real, uh, like in dangerous neighborhoods, they should post, you know, qualified law keepers, police and others, but they don't, because the, the police are afraid. 
even in certain areas in America, the police don't even go because they're afraid of the the criminals. It's a fact. So yeah, this is it's a really a very uh, precarious time where criminality is very strong, all the way from the government down to the little guy who was a pickpocket. So much crime, and they can't stop it. But here's the solution: give people education in spiritual life, help them overcome their tendency the wrong activity by teaching them the benefit of living a more spiritual life. Because when you live a spiritual life, you're happy. And if you're happy, you don't commit crimes or do offenses to others. But that's not considered to be uh, important. That's why they call it separation of God and state. And they made this proclamation a few hundred years ago, or maybe even less than that, that uh, God and state should be separate. The church and the state should be separate. Church should not get involved with any of the activities of the state. But what we have is a, you know, a secular state based on uh, laws that simply support the rich people and the privileged, and the little guy, not person. <laughs> okay. Any questions or comments? Thank you, Maharaj. Um, Silvish Prabhu, go right ahead. You got a hand right up. Go ahead. Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. Uh, well, I wanted to ask, uh, this verse talks about punishing criminals, but is it not more, I guess, coming from a Vaishnav perspective, to try to understand the criminal, why they did what they did? Because we talk about, you know, behind most people today who are like criminals or something, there's often a traumatized child. When, you know, when they were younger, they had maybe issues with their parents or whatever happened in life. And then they turn to a life of crime. So would it not be better to try to understand them from that point of view and give them therapy and so forth? Yeah, but there is some programs like that, but it's not being propagated as a, a feature for direction. Although it, it is, it is a feature. It's more profitable to just take a guy and put him out in a jail they try to give them some some of that same information in jail, but not in a regular way. Jails are more like geared to punishment, that's all, which doesn't really change a person. And the jails are actually uh, very good um, corporations because you know the jails use people in the jail to make things for society, which are, and they don't have to, you know, pay the, well, they do pay some of the in, inmates for doing some of the work there in some cases, but it's really inexpensive labor and they make, they make so much money on the criminals themselves. So everything is based on money. It's not based on human or social values or even moral values or spiritual values. So more of the, yeah, to try to understand would be the first step in giving the solution. We do that. We, we have spiritual counseling and part of our spiritual counseling is we try to understand where a person is at and then move them along. Yeah, it's it, it's being done to some degree, but mostly the jails are just punishment programs. You have you have people who do counseling work on the outside, where they do have people who get out of jail 
And then they go to some counselors to so they can re-enter into society. And then you have people who also have small crimes and they set up counseling programs for them. So yeah, that's being done to some degree, but um, but the thing is, the counseling doesn't take them to the spiritual. In many cases, and because of that, they don't get they don't get a, a solution that is viable. Or they don't they don't get the counseling that they actually need. That's why Prabhupada he said, just give us a building, and then. We will have kirtan and we will distribute prasadam free of charge. And this will change everyone. So is it ultimately that it's our lost connection with Krishna that we need to reestablish to help everyone ultimately, that loving relationship we have with Krishna? Well, if you read the, the very beginning of the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, it picks up from the end of the fifth canto of Maharaj Pariksit. Was in, uh, hearing about the 28 hells that people have to suffer from, from their sinful activities. And then he's asking about Vaishchitya. Vaishchitya means atonement. And uh, uh, then uh, Sukadeva Goswami is responding in the very beginning uh, that we can't purify a wine stained bottle with wine. You can't make a, you can't give us material solution to a material situation. Because the problem is in the heart, it is the contamination, the desire. In the heart, people are lusty, greedy, greed, lust, and this produces anger, produces envy, all of these things. So the real rehabilitation is to purify the heart. And that's Krishna consciousness. There's no such thing as material purification because you can elevate people from the mode of ignorance to the mode of passion. And you can elevate people from the mode of passion to the mode of goodness, which takes a very, very viable program. But still, even in the mode of goodness, they may not commit so many crimes or may even com stop committing crimes, but they're still in the material world having to suffer. So that's what these self-help, psychological, I mean, there's so many of these hundreds of programs out there in society that help people to get from one level to another. But it's still within the realm of, if you if you take a person out of solitary confinement and put him in as a privileged prisoner, he's still in jail. He's still in jail. The idea is get people out of their suffering by giving them the not the, the solution to suffering, which is our natural inclination to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And you start off with programs that are introductory. So we do that. That's our business. But we don't get any support. This Prabhupada, that's Prabhupada would say, we're not getting any support from the state. If we were to get support from the state, we could make so many people mission conscious. They don't see the benefit of our movement. In fact, they even see it as a threat because it cuts into the economic, you know, profits. Hope that helps, Upesh Prabhu. Thank, thank you. It's, it's interesting. Interesting, Lord. Thank you. It's a very nice question, too. Thank you. 
Maharaj, there is a question here in the chat by Nashanga Leela, and she says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, Ogashi Prabhupada. How to conquer the weakness of the heart, meaning something that is not sinful, but is not helpful in our process of devotional service and can strengthen our material desires? Yeah, it's called Ridaya Dulabya, which means weakness of the heart. I know it's wrong, but I still do it. I'm inclined to that. There's that, uh, there's that, uh, you know, I've had six pieces of pizza, I can't move. And somebody comes up with another kind of pizza and it looks even better than what I had before. Still, I know if I eat it, you know, I'm gonna have problems, can't digest properly. I have to fast because I'm, yeah, but still, the Prabhupada uses the thing called na, ne chong. Ne chong means I got it, uh, you know, I know it's wrong to smoke package, cigarette package. Uh, cigarette smoking causes emphysema, lung cancer, complications in pregnancy. And now they even say smoking uh, kills causes death, cancer, but still people smoke. That's weakness of heart. They know it's wrong and they can't stop it. And so a devotee has to strengthen his Krishna consciousness in order to overcome these things. If our Krishna consciousness is weak or not very much, then these things will be, Prabhupada used to say, Maya is as, Maya is as strong as you are weak. As you become strong, Maya becomes the effects of Maya become less and less. So strengthen your Krishna consciousness. Then you will uh, be able to overcome these, these weaknesses. You feel a little weak, chant extra rounds. Take some time and just take a break and read Bhagavatam. Go to the temple and chant and take part in the programs. Strengthen your Krishna consciousness. Hope that helped Nashinga Lila Prabhu. Very nice question, actually. Very right. Let me see what she said here. Yeah, very, very nice question. Thank you. Yes, Bhikkhu Prabhu, please go ahead with your question, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Pranam Maharaj. Uh, firstly, please accept our obeisances. And we had a pleasure and we were fortunate to have your association recently at the retreat in the Vedanta. Hare Krishna. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Nice to be with you and your wife. It was indeed a pleasure, a heartfelt pleasure. Maharaj, uh, this shlok of Srimad Bhagavatam, it's very clear about strong leadership. But the way our planet is, and you have traveled a lot, do you think there is any state or country that follows this principle? And then I have another question, but in your opinion, although it's the right thing, but the governments are too soft on law. And, uh, you know, capital punishment is not regarded as the right thing. They think of reform. but. Uh, do you feel there is any country that follows this example? Yeah, many of the Islamic countries do. Mm. Mm. You get caught using drugs in certain countries, they kill you. Mm -hmm. Many of the Islamic countries, the government's very strong, but it doesn't mean it's 
Krishna conscious, it's just very strong on crime. And that you find out in the Islamic countries, there are many of them. If you know, if you kill somebody, the police will come and just shoot you right there and kill you. They don't waste time and bring you to the court. <laughs> Yeah. And you'll see, but because many of the leaders are also criminals, still there is crime around. But Prabhupada tells the story of, uh, of Alexander the Great. He was a good man. He was a conqueror. And uh, one thief, ordinary thief, was caught in his kingdom. And then he was brought before Alexander. And, I, and the thief said to Alexander, there's no difference between you and me. You're a big thief and I'm a small thief. So why are you punishing me? And Alexander was somewhat reasonable. And then he understood, yes, you're right. I'm going into other countries and stealing, and you're just stealing on the local level. And Baba said he let him go. He wouldn't punish him because he realized he was right. So, but the nowadays the leaders, although they are, they are very strong on the ordinary criminals, they're still criminals in Jesus. Many of them. But that's common in many of the Islamic countries. Very, when anyone gets caught with certain crimes, they don't waste time. They just they just kill them right away. <laughs> and they don't have much crime because of that. That's a fact. Crime is. The, the crime within the general population is quite low because of that. Yeah. What was the second question was? Yes, uh, Maras, you are quite right. In UK, we have high proportion of burglaries, crime, and I think sometimes I feel uh, that the leaders are probably working with their hands tied because of human rights and providing comforts in prison and not being tough enough. And you get also criminals who are working using technology. They still rob people and that's getting worse. Uh, I personally feel uh, whether there is a solution to this in a democratic uh, country and where you know there are a lot of opinions but krishna we take, we take we take the opinion of shastra we don't need to get any of their secular opinions shastra is the word of god and if you kill someone you must be killed automatically. Even if you don't get caught in this life, you'll be killed in the next life. It'll catch up with you somehow. And then you'll have a miserable life in the next life. So the laws are not always perfect in catching in, uh, for criminals. And therefore they go on. But they can't, they can't supersede the laws of material nature. They will get punished anyway. But in order to relieve people of the of the action of their sinful activities, then the crime is meant to be given right when they when they are caught. But that will allow, as Prabhupada said, that allows them to have a good life in the next life. They're free from the reaction of that sin. Or if you come to Krishna consciousness then you can uh, destroy that karmic reaction also. 
So the whole stuff, the whole thing is to bring people to God consciousness. That's the solution. Even in some jails now, we see that the jails are very favorable to the devotees or to some kind of religious reform within the jails because that has much more of an effect. And they start seeing that also. Yeah. That's the only solution is uproot that desire by replacing it with spiritual knowledge, spiritual activity. Spiritual knowledge and spiritual activity give them a higher taste. And when they get a higher taste, as Prabhupada said, you can give up the lower taste. Thanks, Mara. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes, Devi, please go ahead. And if I can just request devotees, if you're able to please turn on your video, that would be really nice so that we can see each other. Hare Krishna. Go ahead, Devi. Hare Krishna, Anasya. Thank you. I'm not sure if you will be able to hear me if I keep the camera on. So if at any point I become unclear, let me know. Okay, so far you're good. Okay. 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 I think you want to turn your camera off. Now you're getting a bit choppy. No, 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 actually, she can leave it on if she speaks slowly. Okay, there we go, Sri Devi. Go ahead. You, if you speak fast, then it gets muffled. You speak slowly, just like you, when you introduced yourself, you were clear because you spoke nice and slow. If you go okay. fast, it's going to get muffled. <laughs> okay. On the question, if a God conscious leader does want to enact stiff punishments in a society that is used to being lax. And uh, better turn your camera off. Yeah, it's, it's muffled again. Okay. Yeah, Sri Devi, can you repeat the question from the beginning? I'm sorry. Okay. On the question of strong leadership, if a God conscious leader wants to institute effective, strong, strict laws to combat crime, then a society that is used to mollycoddling criminals will start protesting that this person is so heavy for all these petty crimes, there's a stiff punishment and so on. But this is the only way to deter criminals, just as Maharaj Parikshit was very firm in his kingdom and no miscreants flourished, a strong leader has to be strong in order to protect the innocent, peaceful citizens. So then my question is, regardless of criticism, a, a strong God conscious leader should act according to Shastric injunctions, right? Yeah, the solution is there. The Shastras don't give you some kind of compromise program. They tell you exactly how things Go on. Shastras cover everything, not only spiritual knowledge, psychophysical understanding of the living entities, nature. Everything you, can, you need to know is in Shastra, and Shastra covers everything. There are 16 sources of knowledge, all coming from Shastra. Yeah. But. 
Uh, but I would say that a God conscious person, if they take the position of power and start to institute the principles of Dharma in terms of punishment and rule, it has to be done in a very systematic and a very careful way to gradually move things along from where it is. If it becomes too abrupt, then you'll get revolution. So you have to do it. It requires a plan, not just a policy. Hope that helps, Sri Devi. Uh, yes, I just have a follow-up question, please. if I may. Yes, please. So just like in the olden days where the king had a council of ministers to consult, to advise, does it mean that teamwork and a good council of ministers or advisors is essential for a God-conscious leader when he has to take charge of a society? 100%. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I'll give you an example. Uh, one devotee was telling Prabhupada that one, at one time in Nubandava, they had, they had a what we call a council that would deal with wrongdoings within the community. And there was uh, 10 people on the council. And then and so the person who was doing wrong, they would be brought to the council and then there would be some, some discussion, some understanding, and then ultimately some reform or some restriction. But Prabhupada liked that idea, even in our society, he said every temple should have that. So that's that's that applies even to spiritual uh, enclaves because you know things go wrong even within the temple within the community spiritual community and things need to be rectified for the protection of the overall society the overall yatra the overall temple. So yeah, that council is one hundred percent important necessary I think they they started something in ISKCON I don't know, what is it called um, maybe somebody knows Jagajivan he started it it was really what, is it, what it was called is it like a, a like an advisory council Maharaj it's more like conflict resolution, something like that. Or uh, ombudsman. Ombudsman. Like it's going to resolve. It's, yeah, yeah. But there's another another, another aspect that has to work with that. Devi, if you're trying to say something, we can't hear you, Prabhu. Uh, the department called ISKCON Resolve. Ma Marge, when you mentioned that your prophet was um, encouraging this council, is it separate from the temple board or part of it? Yeah, it is. It simply does does deals with the wrong activity. Mm -hmm. The board covers more things. The section of the board or an extension of the board.
Thank you, Marge. Anyone else has a question to ask? It's a topic that we face every day in the material world, and we see so much, uh, you know, miscreants running around, <laughs> and we deal with so much stuff running, you know, that we see every day here in our daily lives when we're out there in the material world. So it's a very um, deep topic, a deep question. If there are no questions, um, I will ask Maharaj if he would like to chant before we end the class. I will just wait for him to come back. Hmm. Maharaj, would you like to end with the Rano chanting, Maharaj? Yeah.